Good afternoon, it is Weather United here, and in today's video, we're keeping an eye on Major Hurricane Fiona that is very close to Bermuda as a Category 4 hurricane. We're really not going to spend much time on that in this evening's video, but we're going to be spending a lot of time on this bad boy down here in the southern portion of the Caribbean that is passing very close to Aruba. If you're new, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. So here's a wide view satellite imagery provided by tropicaltidbits.com and we can see here category 4 Hurricane Fiona with 130 mile an hour winds getting very close to Bermuda and then of course for 90% of this video we're going to be talking about Invest 98L that has very high potential of becoming our next name storm within the next five days. Here's a close and zoomed in view really quickly on Major Hurricane Fiona that is headed towards Bermuda. Notice how the eye there is slowly becoming better defined. It's slowly clearing out somewhat, but it is pretty well cloud filled at this time because it is beginning to feel the effects of that shear that we've talked about yesterday and also this cold front that is sliding southward that is going to soon undergo the barrel clinic change with Fiona as it gets uh, further north north of Bermuda, so to speak, and then it gets into Canada. Latest recon data on major Hurricane Fiona does indicate that there is no longer 113 knot winds throughout the system. So it's best to say that this is probably down to a category three hurricane right now, based on what I think, it's my own opinion, but I don't speak for the National Hurricane Center, as again, the wind maximum here is now only in the uh, bright pink purplish color and not in the beige 113 knot area, which would declare or kind of use this as a category four analysis. Otherwise, the system remains very, very powerful and a menace monster to Bermuda as we get into late tonight into early tomorrow morning. For right now though, the National Hurricane Center does keep this at 130 miles an hour as of the five o'clock advisory with a hurricane warning still issued, of course for Bermuda as hurricane force winds are anticipated by late tonight into tomorrow morning. And then hurricane watches and tropical storm watches already issued for Nova Scotia for portions of um, the uh, easternmost portion of Canada as this now transits into an extra tropical cyclone by Saturday early morning and this won't matter a whole lot because winds uh, will be very intense the wind field will be expanding and so you could expect very heavy rain strong winds and very high surf enough to do some serious damage now that we talked about major hurricane Fiona it is a very good idea for the entire rest of this video that we definitely focus on invest 98l as it is very close of becoming our next tropical depression or storm in the next couple of days, in fact. Here's a zoomed in view on Invest 98L and we can see that the system is very well defined at the surface with a very intense closed circulation as we can see by the low level spiraling clouds that you cannot miss by looking at this imagery. We also have had intense deep convection increasing near the center here on the north or on the southwestern side of the low level center which is right here. And the reason why these are offset as we what we talked about this morning and in previous videos is the wind shear. The shear is really impacting the system, but given the fact that it is improving still despite the shear, wouldn't surprise me if this thing really takes off as soon as it gets into the more favorable environment near Jamaica, near the Cayman Islands, in the next two to three days. Now, taking a look at the latest NHC graphical image update here as of 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time this evening, we can see that this system, Invest 98L, that we're going to be talking about, or what we're talking about right now, has a 90% chance of tropical formation in the next two days, and it has a 90% chance of tropical formation in the next five days. But in five days, this could already be a hurricane, if not a major hurricane, according to some of the more aggressive aggressive models that you're about to see in this video. So when we take a look at the latest GFS model forecast from Tropical Tidbits, we can see where our system currently kind of is in the next six or so hours right towards the north of the ABC islands. Yes, Aruba, some of the other islands there. And then here is Jamaica, here's the Cayman Islands, as well as Western 
Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula where this is headed towards. So when we forward this uh, through the next, say, 48 hours, you can see on the latest GFS model, a little more intense, but also a little bit more sheared apart here at 1,002 millibars by early Saturday morning. So no significant development is expected, at least through tomorrow, but Saturday could be one of the days that we got to watch for um, a rapidly transitioning system. In three days, by Sunday early morning, afternoon, we can see the system does develop pretty quickly at 998 millibars, so maybe a tropical storm at this point. By day four, by Monday afternoon, September the 26th, we can see it is getting very close. Again, dangerously close to the Cayman Islands. Here, it's going to pass really close to that. And then uh, the air pressure here is at 967 millibars, so big drop in pressure in a 24-hour period that would lead to rapid intensification and then remember it is not towards cuba yet okay so this would be a very big situation that you all need to really be paying attention to because by the time we go into literally day um three and a half day four and a half day five we have air pressure down at 948 millibars the so pressure really is dropping here and it still intensifies all the way up until the middle of next week where we could be dealing with a very powerful hurricane um, potentially and that's really all i'm going to go into possibly um maybe even a th thursday morning this could remain a strong system but of course i don't want to go too far ahead in my forecast because these models are changing very dramatically. Just a couple of runs ago, we were thinking that maybe portions of Texas, even Louisiana, could be getting impacted. Now we could be looking at, say, Central Florida. Maybe Tampa, Florida could get a landfall out of this. So you can see in just those two model runs, things are really changing in a hurry. So we don't know exactly where this is going to be headed into beyond, say, six or seven days. The European model is pretty similar. No significant development with this in the next three days, as you all can see here, near uh, Jamaica at 1,001 millibars. Strong winds, heavy rain is a sure bet, along to go with maybe some rough surf as this passes to your south, near the Cayman Islands by uh, Monday, early morning to Monday, um, kind of um, later morning at pressures of 987, then approaching Cuba by early Tuesday morning, September the 27th. And then you can see approaching Florida. Yeah, I mean, this is Miami, Florida, potentially in five days on the European model. So we just went from the GFS model having a landfall somewhere over here versus the European model having it over here. And more extreme enough, some of the other models like the Canadian model have it in a similar standpoint like near Louisiana the icon is doing some crazy stuff in fact the icon it doesn't have this hitting the United States at all so we have a track like this overall on the computer model guidance today so very very uncertain exactly how strong this will get and where is it going to exactly go when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico now, please note, we only have one bullish forecast, and that's from the HWRF model, the Hurricane Weather Research Forecast model that we're going to be taking a look at. So please take this with a grain of salt, and I advise you, if you don't want to watch this portion of the video, just skip through to other portions of the video, like the ensembles that I'm going to show you here shortly after I show this, because this is an outlier model I'm afraid of, and this is showing the worst case scenario possible that could could end up happening so let's take then let's kind of take a tour on this so of course this is right now um literally initialized at 18z so that's right about now and we can see what the winds are looking like uh, on the model going forward all the way out to 48 hours still not much development so still a very struggling system to deal with here maybe kind of teeter-tottering between 
a tropical depression and just a typical invest. It's not until we get into, say, 60 hours out when this moves just south of Jamaica when the system might start um, kind of pumping in gasoline, start getting its engine started and, you know, getting the engine running, so to speak, warming it up because we have a tropical storm here by early Sunday morning, September 25th. But take note, here's Jamaica. The system does not hit Jamaica, which is good news, but bad news it remains over the open Caribbean waters where upper ocean heat content here is exceptionally high, where the shear is going to be very low and decreasing, and the moisture content is going to be high. So going out to day three, we have a strengthening tropical storm here with pressures down to 983 millibars and getting right there. I mean, I swear, right there by the Cayman Islands or right on top of them, you have a strengthening hurricane here with pressures down in... 966 millibars and hurricane force winds are hitting some of the islands or one of the islands i should say with tropical storm force winds hitting the other couple of islands so yeah this is a big deal and showing you on the last run this was also strengthening so a couple of runs um this has been consistent now, how consistent? Let's take this all the way out here. Now, these images are still loading. Um, the model's still rendering as I'm making this video. So we don't have the couple of images out. I'm only able to take you out now to 96 hours, and we have a 950 millibar hurricane. This would be a major hurricane on this particular run with some of the, um, um, basically, the Cuban islands. So Western Cuba could, is at threat or at risk for a significant system headed your way. Again, where it intensifies, where it moves is still to be announced. This is only four days out and a lot can still change in four days as we see from the European, the GFS, the ICON, and the Canadian model. And even the HWARF is also kind of changing things around a little bit with timing and location. So this is not a set in stone forecast. So please um, take uh, don't take this seriously just yet, but be aware the H wharf may be onto something. So going forward, 949 millibars right at landfall on Western Cuba. Now, again, this is still rendering, so we don't know exactly. By the time this video is done, this will probably be done, and I will show you the last few frames. So now, taking a look at the ensemble forecast from the European model, and we can see this is, of course, not really illustrating hype or anything this is kind of a what if situation we know we have major hurricane fiona that has developed a little weakness in the ridge over here but of course our system's not there and it's back here underneath this subtropical ridge that is to the northeast of the system so instead of the system likely going to turn out like this if it was in the northwestern caribbean it's actually going to be moving in this general direction because you got the ridge here that is actually building westward as the system is also moving westward. Remember, weather is always in motion, and this erosion of the ridge right now will uh, will actually fill back in um, over the next couple of days. So when we go forward in time, we can see with what we're dealing with here in about three days by Sunday morning on the ensemble forecast. Take note again of the easterly flow loft. That's the shear that the system is going to be dealing with in the next couple of days, substantial. And then day three, the shear backs off. The system tries to get better organized, but take note of this trough up to the north here over Florida, over the southeastern seaboard. This is a little stronger on the ensemble forecast from the European, and the ending result will be that the system actually turns north sooner rather than later. So if it turned north later, then it would be impacting, say, areas like maybe Mississippi, maybe Alabama, maybe Florida. Now, as of right now, most of the trends have trended further east. So a likelihood scenario for eastern or for southern Texas, like, say, Houston or, say, Corpus Christi, Texas, is probably a, is probably off the deck of the cards. But please don't 
um, take my advice seriously as again the models could trend further west again but with this trough in the way right here there is going to be an edge to where this ridge is able to build as we can see here on the isobars by the way this is the cyclonic 500 heights and the upper level wind chart that we're looking at and there's your system in demarcated in red which indicates all the different members kind of clustered together forming an ensemble forecast that is more accurate than not. And most of the ensemble members do indicate that this is gonna hit somewhere in Western Cuba, maybe portions of Florida. That's not the case so much on our GEFS model, which also um, shows a little slightly different scenario, likely due to the fact that the system takes a little bit longer to strengthen, because remember, when it strengthens is when it will probably gain latitude a little sooner. So if it's able to strengthen later, it might move into the Gulf a little bit better and might impact portions of the Gulf Coast. All right, so going out to um, 48 hours, we can see there's our system. Take note, here's the other ridge that tries to build in. But again, this ridge is gonna be eroded by a short wave trough that is gonna drop southward. So that ridge is a short-lived system that's not going to stick around very long. So here's your trough, here's the system, here's another ridge that's over here. You got another trough that's pinched off like this. And so again, there's a weakness and the extent of where this ridge is able to build in. Now taking a look at our intensity forecast from the latest H Wharf and some of the other high resolution models on our spaghetti plot, not much has changed. Only the fact that more of the models now indicate that this is gonna become a deeper hurricane. I'm not going Going to mention exact intensity as again we're not really certain about this forecast this is highly uncertain there's a lot of changes to be made with the forecast from the ensembles from the numerical guidance and so right now as it stands we're going to keep this at a tropical storm throughout the next five days until I get more confidence. So my intensity forecast, however, has been raised from the last one. And I now indicate that this could become now a 50 to 65 mile an hour tropical storm. If you haven't known already, there is a lot of upper ocean heat content here throughout the Caribbean. So a system that's intensifying could be a big, big problem in the Northwestern Caribbean since upper ocean heat content is up up on the upper 90th perceptile of historical averages. And I mean, we're talking about 140 to 180 kilojoules per centimeter squared, which is very substantial for this time of the year. And again, we're dealing with a possible rapidly intensifying system in this portion of the Caribbean. So this would be really, really bad news if this moves in the wrong spot at the wrong time. And then of course you got the loop current up here in the central Gulf of Mexico, which could really make things worse for portions say along the Gulf Coast of Florida, Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. Did the H Wharf update? Yup, it did. And we're at 939 millibars at 114 hours out at this time. We can see where the hurricane force winds here are in grape purple. And then of course we got the beige colors that indicate winds could be up to 130 miles an hour. That's a category four if you really wanna be specific at what you're looking at on this. But again, I did mention this in the middle of my video that please take this with a grain of salt. Please, this is not an actual forecast because if it was, then I would be 10 times, 20 or 50 times more worried and concerned if not scared than I am right now. This is just a potential outcome on the worst case scenario of what the H Wharf apparently is showing in its numerical forecast. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.